Welcome to another episode of Naughty Nut. On this episode, we're getting a little technical and we'll see how you can change the old and inefficient drum brakes into disc brakes. But before we begin, I would like to thank Hacktech hashtag 123 for the comment. The comment says, makes videos fast, bro. Be quick. Thank you for the comment. You really motivate me. I'm telling you, I didn't drink coffee today. So let's get on with it. First, let's understand briefly how the drum brakes work. So this is a drum. It's a part of a rotating assembly. This is also connected to the wheel and it's rotating along with the wheel. Let's keep two things in mind, rotating assembly and stationary assembly. Here we have a part of stationary assembly of the braking system. This assembly consists of a hydraulic cylinder and most importantly the brake shoes that you see on the sides. The drum which is a part of the rotating assembly goes on top of this assembly. When the brake is applied the hydraulic cylinder expands and pushes out the brake liners. The brake liners come in contact with the rotating drum and that's how it slows down the drum and the wheel connected to it and that's how the whole rotating assembly slows down. The drum type brakes are inefficient because they are bulky, they are heavy, they don't have enough ventilation and there is a lot of wear. Disc brakes on the other hand are really simple by design, lightweight, effective and efficient. The disc type braking system has a disc like rotor which is a part of the rotating assembly a caliper which is a part of the stationary assembly the caliper has brake pads inside and the whole assembly sits on the disc it works by squeezing the disc and this slows down the rotation of the disc and the whole rotating assembly along with the wheel friction during braking produces a lot of heat this heat causes a lot of wear. The main advantage of this brake is how efficiently it disperses heat. So the drum brakes are out. This is the drum that goes here. Drum ke piche lagta hai ye wala plate that has the brake shoes here. Um, it's a liner we both did. <clears throat> so this plate we have removed. Now, what I did is that um, I got a Maruti Suzuki Eco front disc first. It's come in a trial here. <clears throat> Maruti Suzuki Eco or Maruti Suzuki Alto, dono ke front disc brakes ka. So first I did a trial with uh, the Maruti Suzuki Eco. This is not the Eco brake, this is uh, Alto. Uh, the dimensions are the same except for the inner ID, this ID. So Maruti Suzuki Eco has about 122 mm. So I just wanted to fit that. And this is about 120 mm and this hub over here is 119 so luckily this fits like a glove you perfectly fit ho jata hai. or even ye jo, uh, bolt jo hai, the lug nuts jisko bolte, uh, ye bhi perfectly center ho except there is a little variation of say about 1 or 2 mm so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, drill the holes bigger. This <coughs> hole will be a little bit bigger. And this hole What I did is I have a This hole is not the original. I have a screw and I just measured the distance of the caliper. I can't show you right now because I don't have uh, enough hands. So, I have this caliper as a mount. This distance I measured. 
so I unscrewed this bolt till it was hitting the caliper. और फिर मैंने उसका डिस्टेंस मेजर किया फ्रॉम दिस प्लेट सो आई नो दैट दैट इज द डिस्टेंस दैट नीड्स टू बी देयर फ्रॉम द कैलिपर सो वी कैन यूज दैट दैट वाज अबाउट 13 और 14 एम तो वी कैन यूज अ प्लेट दैट इज अबाउट 13 और 14 एम एम थिक एंड वी कैन यूज दैट एज Uh, mount for the caliper that's going to uh, stop the brake or uh, it's also going to act as a uh, bearing retainer jo ye jo iske andar jo ye wali bearing hai jisko ye andar push karke rakhta hai the plate is also going to push the bearing inside At the same time you know it's going to act as a caliper mount so that is the thing now we going to go make uh, caliper mount the caliper mount plate for this and i'll just show you how i do it how i do the measurement in everything i already took the measurements of these four mounting points that you see over here i took the measurement of the diameter and i took the measurement between the two mounting points I also took the outside diameter of the bearing that is fitted on the axle. Here we are measuring the center distance of the two mounting points of the caliper. When I say center distance is the center of the hole from center of one hole to the center of another hole and how do we do that? Well, I have a nice trick for that. Use a digital vernier caliper and measure the ID of the mounting hole. Once you get the proper ID zero your vernier caliper and then measure the outside edges of the mounting points here we are measuring the outside edges of the mounting point and let's say it's about 119.9 so we'll even it out at 120 now that's the distance between the center of the two mounting holes so far we have the measurements of the four mounting points the diameter of the bearing and the center distance of the caliper mount now we need to find out where exactly the caliper would be mounted To find this out we could get the measurements from the knuckle but we don't have the original knuckle and even if we did it would be really difficult to find out the measurements of where exactly we'll be placing the caliper mount so what i did is cut a circle of a foam board the same diameter as the brake disc i wedged it in the caliper and then i indented the mounting points onto the circle that was cut Once I made the indentation, I carefully measure the distance of the indentation from the center. This gave us a rough idea of where the caliper would be placed on the disc.
now that we have all the measurements that are needed we're going to feed the measurements onto the AutoCAD. If you're good with measurements and geometry, working with AutoCAD is really easy. And if you like to make most of your parts by yourself, like how I do, you really need to learn AutoCAD. And it's relatively easy to learn. You can find tutorials on YouTube. Now this process of us making the caliper mount is really lengthy and boring. So I'm going to speed up through the whole process and come to the final product. The AutoCAD drawing is almost complete. Now we're going to send this drawing for laser cutting. First, we're just going to get a sample cut in a 2 mm plate. So that way we know that everything fits properly. Once everything fits properly on the sample plate, we'll go for the final laser cut in a 12 mm plate. Laser cut is a CNC operated cutting machine that cuts in 2D. It cuts m is up to 15 to 16 mm it is not as precise as wire cut or cnc milling and it also can't cut in depth for example if you have a 10 mm plate it can't make a hole that is just 5 mm deep if it cuts it cuts all the way through but it is good enough for our application over here that's the 2 mm sample plate as per our drawing and it was a good idea to cut the sample plate first because after installing and after checking all the clearances, we found out that the caliper piston housing was interfering with the plate. I made a few cuts to this plate with an angle grinder and test fitted everything again. After making the cut, everything fits perfectly. So we made the changes to the final drawing and came up with the final product. I made two designs for the plate. In the end, I'm going for the one that was more curvy. Here you can see the plate already mounted along with the caliper and the disc. You can also see the spacer right there. That's the spacer I used to adjust the placement of the caliper. You can also see the piston housing that would have interfered if we didn't make the changes. Have a thorough look at this beautiful conversion along with some nice music and I'll see you at the end.
that's it for this episode of Naughty Nut. In the next episode, we're gonna make our very own hydraulic handbrake. I hope you're enjoying my work and my content. If you have any suggestions, please comment. Please like, subscribe, and share. See you next time.